I recently finished playing Red Dead Redemption 2 and it was great. This game gave me so many emotions that I felt like a kid. I loved Red Dead Redemption 2 incredibly much. And now I'm going to tell you about my impressions of the game in 100 hours of gameplay. I have long been trying to correctly approach the script for this game and except for words. It was perfect. Something coherent does not climb. In my head a lot of thoughts that need to somehow correctly formulate, because Red Dead Redemption, personally for me, the best game at the moment in principle. Red Dead Redemption is like the smell after the spring rain. Unique. You moron, moron. And that's why Red Dead Redemption 2 can be so much loved and at times hated. Today I will tell you. At the moment when Red Dead 2 came out, I had neither time for it nor a good PC and that's why like many titles, I just postponed it for some day. I didn't watch reviews, walkthroughs too, except for a couple of streams, just to look at what it's so much hype around. I knew about the first part, but I didn't have PlayStation 3 to play it, so I was not familiar with the series until now. But the theme of the Wild West, Cowboys and Wastelands I like. Yes you can, and you will. At one time I played all parts of Call of Juarez, there were very cool shooting on Revolus and my favorite part of Fallout New Vegas I occasionally like to replay. It's about the wastelands, yeah. Anyway, I realized that the game is cool, but I was afraid to start it because it's so big. But I did it. I didn't regret it one bit. Red Dead Redemption 2 is the weird case when you don't want to leave the game. As if you went to your native gym where you want to make one more approach. Such and other works I haven't met for a long time, and I haven't received so many emotions from the main characters since my childhood, when the grass was greener and games were in style by passing the right of purchase and installing the disc in the disk drive on the computer. It's a truly great game that should be set as an example of how you should treat your own creation. The first thing that hooks you is George's coherent, very realistic environment. The scenery is sometimes impossible to take your eyes off. And the detailing will make you look even into the meat. I, for example, at first only did what I was looking at the camp, watching Mr. Pearson chopping meat into pieces. How our gang is doing their business and living life. Unlike you, heh. <laughs> but even more riveting here is our main character named Arthur Morgan. As you go along, you'll just fall in love with this guy. In a manly way, of course. Yeah, he's far from silky, far from the smartest man in the world. But he's then adorable as a character and integral as a person, as a personality. But let me structure my monologue a bit and tell you about everything in order. Oh, 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 I got you now, you bastard! We are all bastards, my friend. Oh, I'll start with the most enjoyable and interesting scene about this game, of course the plot. Your Wanderlinde gang, led by Dutch Wanderlinde, committed an unsuccessful robbery in the town of Blackwater, after which, leaving everything they had gained somewhere there, they fled far to the north and hid in the mountains. This is where it all begins. Our group is freezing in a blizzard and we are trying to find some shelter. On the way some members of the group we lost, some for good and some will still have to be found, but the gang acts like a family, but the family is not without a freak. During the blizzard we managed to find an abandoned village, to meet old enemies in the form of the O'Driscoll gang. They are the old enemies of Dutch, or rather their leader, Colm O'Driscoll, to save a girl named Sadie and finally to sleep a little and regain our strength. As a result, the gang descends from the mountains closer to civilization. And as they pass will roam through different states of the country to save up some money and sell somewhere to Tahiti, to become farmers and get high on the beach drinking cocktails with umbrellas and cows. Because Dutch always has a plan that he sticks to. In general, the plot is very reminiscent of some of the works of the movie. For the most part it's good, bad and the ugly, Django Unchained and The Hateful Eight. The imitation of the movie is especially noticeable during the epic scenes, such as the burning of the Bretto Eyes house. But that moment didn't come out epic for me because Arthur got a little buggy. Or the moment that gives me gas booms, when John goes to avenge Arthur to a great soundtrack. 
But the plot here is also diluted with some more worldly matters, which makes many of the characters as well as Arthur himself reveal much more depth. For example, I'll never forget one of the first scenes when Arthur gets drunk in a bar with Lenny and then wakes up in the middle of nowhere and lands. Whittle, isn't it? <laughs> the plot here shows the characters as real people and reveals the character of almost everyone. Even such a seemingly useless character as Uncle, who only does what he drinks, does nothing and sleep, can harmoniously fit into the epilogue with John. Personally for me it was unexpected. Well, the relationship between Dutch and Arthur is a separate story, because Arthur's father and mother died when he was a child. Arthur was picked up by Dutch and raised as a son. Arthur just could not cross Dutch and therefore obediently listened and carried out of his plans, despite the absurdity of their actions. What was most painful to watch was Arthur's realization that Dutch was simply using him for his own selfish purposes. Throughout the story, Arthur simply cannot believe that Dutch is not afraid to ruin the gang or kill Arthur with a Simons or another plan. And when Dutch throws Arthur to certain deaths when it could have been avoided, Arthur realizes for sure that he can't do business with Dutch anymore. It's just a frustrating as if your body stopped going to the gym with you. The most heartful scene about Arthur in this story is that he's been used by Mary's ex-girlfriend. He's also been used by Dutch, but he, in his kindness, follows these tricks. The last quest with Mary I refused to do, by the way. In it, Mary asked for help for her father, who for a second was adamantly opposed to the fact that she and Arthur were together. But none of that compares to the moment when Arthur finds out he got tuberculosis, from the dude he's been collecting debts from. <coughs> Arthur reveals his personality for 100% and makes you believe that this is not just a dummy you control, but a real life person. So Arthur is well and vividly written as a character. In addition to the story of Arthur himself, it also touched on some of the other pressing issues of the time, such as how difficult it was to market Moonshine at the time, or trying to wipe out the Indians for good. The storyline with Rain's fall and his son Eagle Flies can't leave you somewhere of the age. They are not shown as savages with bows and tomahawks, but rather wise people with their own customs, culture and philosophy of life. All wisdom is passed on through the elderly Falling Rain, who shares his experiences with Arthur, who has hit a dead end in his life and is facing something imminent. Also, women's rights issues are shown in her there too, albeit in passing. But the really strong female character is the girl we rescued from the burning house that the Driscolls had taken over. Sadie Adler was happily married, living a quiet life. But then the gangsters came, killed her husband and she ended up in Dutch's gang. Her whole life was destroyed and no longer made sense. But thanks to Arthur, or rather the fact that he took her with him on one mission, they turned into a gunfight. Sadie became a killing machine and at times she was beating some of the men. And in the end she became a bounty hunter and then helped John get back on his feet and get to Mike. At least in one of the dialogues you can learn that she would love to have that happy life back with her husband, instead of all of this. That's the way to do female characters if you want to show them strong and independent. Not just stick her with 10 pounds of steroid laden muscle with a club instead of a brain, right a bit. But in terms of the overall plot, it's a pretty solid cowboy story about a tough gang with a charismatic ring leader and equally colorful and charismatic gang members. It's a story about the Wonderland gang trying to get back on their feet after a major failed robbery. Or rather, the gang took the money, but it had to be left near a black water. Throughout the story, we find one job or another, be it robbing train, in a bank or some rich family. I got some jelly beans. 
Life is far from quiet for the Wanderlindes. They are always moving around the states after each successful case or not so successful. Even though Dutch keeps saying that they should lay low. Every time he fights and proposes a bigger and bigger case and tries to convince Hosea and Arthur that this is definitely the last time. The story is very coolly framed by the changing locations and characters we get to meet along the way. Whether it's a swampy area which smells like a Louisiana wipe Somebody. or Saint Denis, a huge industrial city which is all built up with factories and four-story houses. All the characters, the razor with it antagonist were the Grey family, with an obvious sheriff at its head. And the bright white family, led by an old woman who stole Jack from Wanderlinde and handed him over to an equally charismatic Italian Mr. Brante. I ate spaghetti. The appearance of the Italian Mafia was a great pleasure, because we are all accustomed to seeing them only in the setting of America in the 20s. Mr. Salieri sends his regards. The history of the gang and Arthur's personal experiences were very consciously combined, and due to very interesting side missions, the plot does not sag at any stage. Speaking of side missions, they are excellent here. Whether it's helping the photographer, who is always trying to catch in the frame, as for example, wolves are eating their prey. And Arthur at this moment helps not to become the photographer himself this prey. Or a quest with a mad doctor, who created a creepy robot that eventually rebuilt, killed its creator and went free. Hasta la vista. Baby. Well, or my favorite quest chain has to do with a widow who lost her husband on a hunting trip. Here Arthur, already being sick on tuberculosis, teaches grief trick and Charlotte to survive in the wilderness. Oh shit, I'm sorry. In which she settled with her husband. He taught her how to hunt and got her prey, and periodically she could visit and see how well she was coping with a difficult life here. And when Arthur had another attack and lost consciousness, she carried him to the bed and tried to help him somehow. And such side quests are few, only 10 chains, but they are so coolly done. It is a pleasure to pass them, especially when most of them are quite fun. For example, a quest with a French artist who lost to draw for other people's naked wives. Like Buddha said, you know, we are all just here to fuck. <gasps> or a series of quests called Scent of Grim, in which Arthur gets acquainted with a razor colorful group of circus actors. In general, the story component of the game is just great. And most importantly, for 100 hours of gameplay, you will not get bored with either the story or the exploration of a huge living world. Well, before we get to the gameplay and the open world, it's worth talking about Arthur Morgan and why he is one of the best characters in the game industry in general. I think so, when the game itself can tell you about what is the characters you are playing for, show his weaknesses and strengths, emphasize the character and show in general what kind of person it is. And then the character is worked out on the conscience. And the way we nowadays like to do developers, they give you either a hollow dummy, which you create yourself so the player will better associate with the characters and see himself in it. We'll live on. Jesus. Of when they give you some kind of protagonist, but as you go through the game you only know his name at best. And to learn more about him you have to go either wiki fandoms or read the notes in the menus. No, that's all completely fucked up. A game is an interactive piece of work, yes, but it doesn't mean developers can be lazy and make a story during game to score the fuck out of revealing your character. No, I love the assistant trilogy about Ed's Auditore, because with each part of the game we were shown the change of the character, his maturation and relationships with other people. From this the character became significant and as a result alive. So after playing earlier too, I was just shocked at how much Arthur Morgan was developed as a person. I really can't see him as something made up. He is described in such detail that I can only think of him as a person. Arthur Morgan is on the face of it a simple talk. Without conscience, without regret, he certainly does absolutely horrible things for his own profit and the profit of the gang. But I'm not a good man, Jimmy Brooks. 
But he's charming, he's charismatic, he's stupid about a lot of things, but he's also witty and curious. What I like most about Arthur is that he doesn't try to hide his stupidity. He realizes that he was born in a far from better society and was shaped and spoiled by it. But in him very often flashes kindness and humanity, which he most likely suppressed far in his youth. And when Arthur learns of his fatal illness, here he reveals his essence to all 100%. When he realizes that he does doesn't have long to live, he tries to do something good in the rest of his life. But Arthur is afraid, like all humans. I guess I... I'm afraid. On the one hand, Arthur really wants to help close and not quiet people, so that at least someone would feel better than him, but on the other hand, he probably would not have started to do so if he were healthy. Arthur refuses rewards for tasks during his illness, or just gives money away, as he did to the widow of the man who gave Arthur tuberculosis. Arthur tries to help John and his family, because he can still start a normal life, which could be an Arthur. But it so happened that he spoiled a lot of things, and life itself put sticks in the wheels. In general, Arthur is an amazingly lively character, and I just adore him. Yeah, we each got $15. Oh, and a quarter. Don't forget the quarter. Shut up, Arthur. Oh, but the beauty and integrity of the graphics is better to see for yourself. It's a great here. Starting from the elaboration of traces in the snow, mud, ending with beautiful landscapes of nature. Here practically everything reacts to your character. Branches, earth, grass, rocks, absolutely everything has its impact. And with all this looks extremely realistic and very pleasing to the eye. In the daytime you can admire the glare in the puddles or muscles of your horse and in the evening to gaze into a real copy of the starry sky and try to find constellations while sitting by a cozy fire somewhere near the water. The picture is clear and even textures are not angular and Arthur Morgan's face is perfect. So the graphics here is one of the best for the last 5 years and definitely the best at the time of its release. Well, and where can we go without gameplay? Due to the fact that the game was given just some incredible attention to details, the gameplay feels extremely lively and very smooth. But with the shooter component there are some problems. Yes, the game is very pleasant to gallop and crash on horseback. The balls of horses deserve a separate attention in general. But shooting feels very casual, sometimes too much. That is, the weapons feel pretty good. You can and should shoot with revolvers and enjoy it, but obviously it could have been done a little better, especially in shootouts with NPCs, who behave as if Arthur came to the shooting gallery. They're too stupid and very easy to shoot back. But in general, it's pleasant to shoot and as you go through the game you don't get bored, though you could make the shooting a little more immersive. I guess that's the only reason to dislike her there too. And what don't you like about this game? Would be interesting to read. The open world simply breaks all the patterns of open worlds. Red Dead Redemption 2 is exactly the case when the open world is interesting, it's filled with a lot of easter eggs, interesting places, some abandoned buildings with useful loot or money, or just places with insanely beautiful landscapes. Just like that, you're at your mayor, look at a beautiful sunset. You go to the river and you fish all night. Fishing here is just a separate game. You, sir, are a fish. Especially if you play with a gamepad and feel all the vibrations, you can feel something like fighting with a real fish. And the bigger it is, the harder it's to twist the stick and wrestle a huge pike. In fishing I disappeared sometimes for hours, so meditative scene after all. Especially when you love nature, in this game you can really relax and get high from the process of fishing, and then sit by the fire, eat hot fish and drink it all with coffee. In the open world you can also enjoy random events. Where they sucking out snake venom from some poor guy. What the hell are you two doing? Or helping a woman who was stolen by some dude. For the first 30 hours, the events are always different. And I thought there were really so many of them that they wouldn't start repeating themselves. But after about 30 hours, they start happening in a circle. But at the same time, they are absolutely not stressful. Not everything in our lives is unique, right? Due to insane amount of details, smoothness of all animations, gameplay is perceived very well and pleasantly. 
but of course shooting could be made a little more interesting and enemies a little more intelligent. In general, for me personally, Red Dead Redemption 2 is the best game in all its aspects, at least because it kept me going for 100 hours. I really haven't wanted to play one game for that long, in a very long time. Of course I'm about single player games. For example, recently I tried to go through Far Cry 5, and no matter how many positive scenes were in it, I just became stuffy from the amount of low grade content that the developers are trying to cram into you at every corner, and it became very boring. I ended up dropping it on the 15th hour, and Red Dead Redemption 2 made me feel like a child who just plays the game and enjoys it. No one forcibly shows a bunch of shiny content or annoying events into you. They give you an open, really alive world and an interesting story, and how long you want to stay in it is up to you. Red Dead Redemption 2 was the perfect game to get away from a bunch of problems in the real world and feel happy. This game gave me a lot of emotions and warm immersions in the wonderful world of the Wild West. At least for these feelings and emotions I adore Arthur Morgan and Red Dead Redemption 2. And if you liked the video, then don't forget to put a like and subscribe to the channel.